Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A, but get ready because I think this one's going to be a long one. <laughs> so pull up your favorite chair, get your cup of coffee, and away we go <laughs> with the first question from New You By Me. What is your opinion on putting straps not made by Louis Vuitton on bags such as the Pouchette and M? Uh, and I know exactly what you're talking about because a, a few years ago I watched someone else on YouTube uh, talk about someone that was selling chains uh, in specific for uh, Louis Vuitton products on eBay. And I purchased two of them. This is one of them and this is the other. Uh, and I know that uh, obviously the Pouchette NM, I, I absolutely love this bag. And um, I think it's, it's, I like the fact that it fits so much. However, I'm not too big of a fan of how small the strap is because sometimes I do want to wear this crossbody and if I don't have a Vaqueta strap to go with it or if you get the Demi Ben or something like that, uh, you don't want to spend the extra cash to be able to get uh, a long crossbody strap for it in order to be able to use it as a crossbody strap. So I also purchased, uh, as I said before, I purchased these and um, they are actually very high quality chains. I don't remember the uh, the seller's name on eBay. If I remember, or if any of you guys remember, make sure and leave it in the comments down below. I will make sure and look through uh, my transactions. I'm sure I can find it uh, and I'll put it on the description box below as well. But I actually got two different ones and they're, uh, they're actually both I think, uh, I think they're the same size, if I'm not mistaken. But I like them because I love the fact that I can go cross body and this still have this beautiful, you know, gold tone hardware to go with it. Uh, now, I will be honest, I have used it a few times and I get, I freak out for the simple fact that I'm afraid that because the, the, as you can, let me just show you guys the difference really quick. Hang on. Here's the difference. Here's the Louis Vuitton one on my right and then this one on the left. Uh, I get really, really scared because I'm afraid that this hardware, the the one that's not Louis Vuitton, will end up rubbing up on this hardware a little too much because the Louis Vuitton one is actually, it's very polished, it's very smooth, so I don't have to worry too much about it. But this one, I have a feeling like what if it starts to kind of have jagged edges or what if it starts to wear on the hardware a little bit more than it should. So that's the only setback that I have. I, I get a little, you know, skeptical or a little bit worried about it when I do wear it. But I like the fact that it is a different way to be able to dress up your bag, wear it crossbody. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I got these for like 10 bucks a piece. Uh, I got them from overseas. It, it did take a little while for me to get them. But as I said before, if you want to spruce up your bag, and if you want to be able to use this without getting, use the Pusha Accessoire NM without getting the Eva clutch and spending the extra cash and only having to spend, you know, maybe 10, 15 bucks on some chains, I think it's a pretty good way. Uh, but just keep in mind that the hardware is not going to be the same on this as it is on the Louis Vuitton. So it might wear a little bit differently in the long run if you tend to wear it a lot. So, um, yeah, I just thought I would share and hopefully I was able to give you guys a little bit of the info on those. Uh, but as I said, I will, I promise I will scour everything I can on eBay and put, uh, the, the link on the description box below. Uh, okay. So next question, Tiffany Ann, the classic flap in your opinion, which is the best, most versatile size to acquire for your first classic flap purchase. I keep going back between the medium and the jumbo, which do you think is a better investment? Um, okay. So honestly, first things first, it all comes down to preference. Uh, when I first looked at the classic flaps, I always thought I wanted the medium. And uh, when I went into the store to purchase my bag, I actually went with the intention of buying the medium. But when I started to put my items in there, I couldn't fit everything that I wanted to wear on an everyday basis. And uh, I will never forget what my sales associate said. She said, oh, Minnie, it's a beautiful evening bag. And I looked at her and I said, oh, huh, I guess you're right. I didn't want another evening bag. I have clutches and I have, you know, little things like that that I can wear or small bags. I wanted a bag that really I could wear during the day without a problem and I can transition into night without a problem as well. So therefore I went for the jumbo for that simple reason. Uh, I, I think both bags are a great investment. Obviously they hold their resale value very, very well. And they're both in very, uh, popular demand. Uh, but 
I tend to carry a lot of items with me and I always like to make sure that they're with me. You know what I mean? Like if you, if you want a smaller bag and you want to go compact, then the medium would be a better uh, choice for you or if you don't carry too much during the day. But if you carry a little bit more, the fact that you can put everything in the jumbo, everything fits, you don't have to take anything out, uh, that might be a better choice for you. But you can transition from day to night with both. It is really all about preference. Uh, and obviously, there is a $500 difference between the two. But both are great investments. And uh, in my opinion, uh, ha if I had to do it all over again, I would still choose the Jumbo for that reason because I wanted an everyday bag that I can wear all the time. Uh, and I didn't have to worry about you know having to change my wallet or change this and everything fits. So hopefully... <laughs> <laughs> I was able to, <laughs> to help you out with that one. But either way, oh, <laughs> when you get your first flap, it's just like, I don't know. <laughs> it's so exhilarating. Uh, okay, Everyday Glam. I have been eyeing the six ring key holder in Monogram with the fuchsia interior, but I'm torn between Monogram and Vernie. What are your thoughts? If Vernie, what color? Uh, actually, as much as I like the Vernie six ring key holder, I would advise against it because... I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I have my keys in my hand or even in my six ring key holder, and if I'm running, you know, crazy or if I'm running around, if, if I'm doing this, that, and the other, sometimes I have dropped my keys on the ground. I've dropped them on dirt, on concrete, on gravel, on, I mean, so many other different surfaces. And the fact that it's canvas, I doesn't worry me. So if, if I've dropped it, ah, okay, it is what it is. But if it were vernie, because even though it is a durable leather, I am afraid that if it'll start to get, you know, pits or pockets, if it falls on gra if it falls on, um, if it falls on dirt, gravel, or any of the surfaces that I had just mentioned. So that kind of worries me. And I don't want to have to baby my keys at all, especially if that's what it's intended for just for your keys. So if it's a grab and grow, a uh, grab and go item, I don't want to have to be like, Oh, I have to hold on to it because of this. If it falls, it falls and I don't have to worry. So therefore I always suggest uh, the canvas for that reason. Very, very carefree. Uh, okay. Miss Elena, uh, what are your thoughts on the Chanel medallion tote? Uh, for those of you that don't know the, the, the medallion tote is a very, it's a smaller tote. It's a little bit on the taller side and uh, it is available. I do believe in lambskin, but I know for sure in caviar and it has a giant CC. It's kind of like a uh, Chanel GST only it's, it's in the form of a of a smaller tote, if that makes any sense. It doesn't have the chain detail on it. It just has the leather straps, two leather straps. And I, I actually, at first when I thought about it, I wasn't too crazy about it. But if you don't want to get a flap and you don't want to get a GST and you still want to have that beautiful look of Chanel, I think the, Chan uh, the, uh, the medallion tote is a great way to go. Uh, you still get the beautiful caviar leather or, you know, anything like that. You get the details. They are absolutely, I actually like these, but I, I love them I, because <laughs> as I said, before I think about it, before I thought about it, I'm like, ah, I'm not too big of a fan. And then the more and more I saw it, the more and more I started liking it. <laughs> and now, as I've told you guys, I really do like it. Uh, but I did write some notes on here and, uh, it says you can still get, the, oh, that's right. Because they are quilted leather. You, if you still want to get that quilted look without having to go for the flap or the GST or any other kind of bag that, that Chanel has, I think it's a great way to go. So I, I really do like them. <laughs> They're very ladylike. Uh, okay. Nick Ava, Nick, Nick of five. I'm so sorry. I keep butchering your guys' names. Uh, hi, many. Just wondering. I'm getting the Speedy 30 in white multicolor, and I have a cosmetic pochette in the same print. Since the Speedy has a red interior, do you think it will leave color transfer on the multicolor pochette? Yes, I do. Uh, unfortunately... It's so sad because I know you want to be able to wear them or to have them both together in the bag, but... Uh, when I had my Speedy 30 and Demi, or my Speedy 35 and Demi event, and I had my Azure cosmetic pouch, I put it in there just not thinking, uh, because I had a, you know, I had to move the, I had to move all my items into that, that bag. And then I had to just leave the, you know, leave the house. And, um, when I realized it, I think it was like two days later because of the movement that I created with, uh, you know, while I was walking and while I had the bag, the corners of the cosmetic pouch started to turn 
kind of like a light, light pink because of the red. So if you put the white and the red together, it's going to make that pink. And I was so, so distraught because I knew I shouldn't have done it. And for whatever reason, I had a total brain fart and I just put my cosmetic pouch in the Damia Ben uh, Speedy and the rest is history. So I would advise against you doing it if you want to make sure that your pochette stays looking as great as possible. Uh, and it's actually kind of weird because the Speedy 30 Multicolor uh, Noir has the very light, like gray kind of ma or topish uh, color inside the lining. So therefore, you wouldn't have to have a problem with it if you wanted to go with the black one and to put it in inside of that bag. So it's kind of a bummer that the, <laughs> that the white multicolor has that beautiful red lining, but at the same time, um, you want <laughs> you want to make sure that your items stay looking as good as possible. So I would advise against it. Uh, okay. Now, let's see. Nadja Jorgensen, uh, what's your opinion on the Louis Vuitton Monsu BB and, e and Epi Leather? Uh, okay, so the Monsu is very similar. It's now only available in BB and... Uh, it's a very, uh, it's very similar to the Pouchette Matisse, only it has a few details that the Matisse doesn't have, and uh, it's back, way back when they had it in monogram, and even though I can appreciate the Epi Leather with the Monsu, I actually prefer the monogram. I prefer the vintage look. Uh, if they did decide to bring it back with... Uh, with canvas, I think it would look, with monogram canvas, I think it would look a lot better. But I think that's probably why they brought in the Pochette Matisse. Obviously, the, the Pochette Matisse is a, uh, is a little baby bag off of the Matisse, but it still has the same characteristics. But I am not a big fan of the Epi leather for that bag. Uh, okay, Jeanette Legrand Floric. Uh, what LV bag is your go-to bag on a rainy day? I've been contemplating getting a Damia Ben Speedy B or a Neverfull. Uh, and let me show you my go-to, which is this beauty right here. This is my Louis Vuitton Speedy 35 and Damia Ben. Uh, this is absolutely 100% my certified rainy day bag. Uh, I absolutely love, love, love this because I'm able to put in, I'm able to fit so much in here. I'm able to fit in a sweater, um, a scarf, hat, gloves, whatever it is, I can fit it in here. And I prefer the Speedy over the Neverfull for the rainy, uh, for the rainy season because, or anytime it rains, because it doesn't have an opening. I'm able to just pretty much close it off with the zipper and I don't have to worry about my items in here getting uh, ruined or getting rained on or anything like that. So out of the two, definitely I would suggest the Speedy B. Uh, and obviously you're, you're, you know, you're a lot more hands-free and it's a lot more of a versatile bag than the Neverfull. As much as I love the Neverfull, I, I personally don't prefer it for rainy days because as I said before, the opening kind of I, I don't like that. <laughs> what if you're caught in a downpour? You know what I mean? You don't want all your stuff getting getting ruined. So, <laughs> Speedy V. <laughs> uh, okay. Vanel Cotlong and DKDA54 uh, have a similar question. Sad to hear about Demia Ben. Do you think it will lower resale value of the Demia Ben bags and SLGs? Um, and this is in reference to what I told you guys last week. The fact that Louis Vuitton has since lost trademark ownership of the Demi Ben print. Um, and I know a lot of people, uh, I, and I apologize if I, if I scared any of you guys into, you know, into thinking that it will resell, it will hurt the resale value, but I honestly don't think so. Uh, for the simple fact that quality will always prevail. Uh, there are other companies out there that have similar prints, but the quality is just not there. So I think it might, uh, I actually think it re might reverse it. I think people might be, in a sense, a little bit more excited to get Damia Ben, uh, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but I, I honestly wholeheartedly think that it will not lose its resale value uh, because the quality, like I said, once again, is there and it is absolutely phenomenal. And yes, they've had some problems with their quality, I know, but at the same token, it's Louis Vuitton and uh, you're you're definitely paying for quality. Uh, so I think we'll be okay. <laughs>
we better be okay. It's my favorite print. So I'm very optimistic about it. Uh, okay. Uh, Penny Hastings, what are your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton Zippy Wallet? Uh, I do like the Zippy Wallet. I have a Zippy Organizer, and I thought about getting a Zippy Compact Wallet, but I think Zippy Wallets in general are very great great SLGs. Uh, I really do like the fact that you have tons of privacy and you can fit so much in any one of those three wallets. So I think it's a great investment. So I would definitely go for it if you're thinking about getting it. Uh, and she has two questions, or I'm sorry, she has two questions. And the second one is what would your top five starter bags for Louis Vuitton be? Oh, this is a tough one. <laughs> well, hands down, first one, I'd have to say a speedy. Um, probably a speedy 30. Uh, if you need versatility, a speedy B would be a great way or bandolier, or if not the classic speedy. Um, what else? A neverfull versatility again. And it's just a great tote to be able to wear, you know, in everyday, uh, situations. What else? Uh, the iconic Alma, whether you get a vernie, an epi, or if you get canvas, I think they are all absolutely fabulous bags. So in, uh, in Alma and then what else? Um, Hmm. I'm trying to think. <laughs> I'd have to say a crossbody bag. If you, if you end up getting the speedy, if you get the speedy in the classic sense, I think that number four should be a great, uh, crossbody bag, whether it's an Eva clutch or whether you choose to get the extra strap for the pochette accessoire or the favorite. Um, I think a crossbody bag would be a great mix to add to the, to the previous bags. And number five, hmm, it's not really a bag that you'd use every day, <laughs> but I'd have to say a keep all because <laughs> a keep all is just, obviously they started with, uh, with travel goods. And I think that is a great, great thing to have in your, into your collection. So speedy, the Neverfull, the Alma, a crossbody bag of your choosing, and a keep all would be, I think, a very well rounded uh, start to a collection. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, summer. Summer Fu. Uh, I have ordered the 2015 Ramages collection, Speedy 30. What are your thoughts on this collection? If you are going to get a piece, what will be your choice? I'm not sure I fancy the print, or maybe I should save the money for a Speedy B in Enfront. Um, as much as I appreciate the creative direction that Louis Vuitton has taken with this collection, the Ramages, Ramages, whatever it is, uh, <laughs> I am not a fan of it at all. It the and if you like special editions, if that's your thing, it's a great uh, it's a great bag uh, it's a great bag to get. I do not like the print whatsoever. I think it's very it's not appealing to my eye. I like the fact that it has that many colors. It kind of reminds me of the Steven Sprouse uh, roses collection because it has very very vibrant colors, but. I don't like the design of it. I, it looks like coral with a bunch of polka dots. I don't know. And then it looks like a giant giraffe just is all, I don't know. It, <laughs> it, and I'm not trying to knock it. If you have it, you know, congrats to you. However, for me, it is not something that I like. Uh, and if it's not something you fancy, then you always run the risk of buying it and then just setting it aside. So if I were you, I would end up putting my money towards a Speedy B on front. Uh, and um, I would call it a day. <laughs> uh, but yes, sad to say it's not for me. Uh, okay. Ariel Sanchez. Hi, many. I live in New York City and I have been eyeing a multicolor Speedy 30 but unsure of practicality. Do you think a speedy is a good, is good for urban lifestyle riding in crowded subways, buses, daily, etc. Uh, okay. So the speedy, the speedy multicolor 30 as beautiful as the bag is, I am obsessed with the bag. However, I think for urban lifestyle, I would not uh, I would have to advise against it for what you just said. You said uh, riding in crowded subways or buses daily. Obviously, uh, New York City is a very, very busy city and people are always going to and from and they're in a rush to get uh, everywhere and anywhere. So if you had your bag and let's say you're riding on the bus or if you're riding on the subway and people are just going to be just 
going by you like it's nothing you run the you run the risk of someone just kind of bumping it and hitting something else or oh my goodness when we were in uh when we were in paris the first time i will never forget it this lady was trying to uh to hold the 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 metro or the whatever it was for her friend and she put her bag in and it started to kind of smash the bag and it, you know, it opened back up so her friend can come in. I was freaking out. I was just like, oh my goodness, no, don't do that. It was a higher end bag. So that always makes me think of that. And as you know, I would, if you ended up getting it, I would just use it for special occasions or something like that. But it is such a beautiful bag. And obviously you don't want something to, to happen to it or to get ruined. Uh, so being in very crowded areas, I think, uh, you know, for transportation would be, um, something that you would want to stay away with, stay away from with that bag. So unfortunately, no, not for urban, uh, lifestyle. I love that lifestyle though. It just, it's so busy. I love it. <laughs> Any big city I'm obsessed with. Uh, okay. Flora love. Hi, many. I really like the monogram LV Sarah wallet, but I don't like the color of the lining. Do you think it would be worth the extra money to buy the Mon Mono option of the wallet and not add the stripes or initials, but just customize it by changing the inside of the wallet? No. <laughs> um, I, if I were you, I, like I said earlier, you run the risk of buying something and using it for a little bit and then just kind of setting it aside and then you don't use it at all. Uh, so for that, for that, if, if I was in the same predicament, what I would do, I would actually hold off on getting the Sarah wallet altogether and, uh, maybe, you know, go back into the boutique or go back into the store and check out the back, check out the, uh, the wallets and see if there's something else that you haven't, uh, you know, really given, uh, given a second look to, and just kind of really go from there because paying a little bit there or that much more for a Mon Mono just to get the color interior, uh, I don't think is a wise decision. However, it is whatever you want. If if that's what you feel like doing, if you want to add your own customized color, then go for it. Uh, it's whatever makes you happy. But as I said before, if I was in that predicament, I would actually just end up uh, not purchasing either. And then I would wait till I fall in love with a wallet that I absolutely love. Because then what happens is you're so happy with it, you'll end up using it. You'll end up using it every day, and you'll just be so excited to uh, to use it. And versus just you know, kind of be, be kind of, well, I don't know. I like it, but I don't like the interior. And then you set it aside. So no. Uh, okay. BBKK. Hi, many. What are your thoughts on the Dior Canage quilted canvas tote? Uh, the, this quilted tote, it kind of reminds me of a Neverfull only it's coated canvas and it's a quilted cold, uh, it's a quilted coated canvas. And I, I am not a fan of it whatsoever. Uh, I think, I don't know if, if something's going to be coated canvas, I would rather just be coated canvas and just be kind of the smooth, uh, texture to it. I don't think that the quilts add any more luxury to it. I actually think it does the opposite for it. Uh, and it has this really weird cinching of a belt on the top part that I, I don't know. I don't like it. Um, I think that the quilts are look better with leather, but no, not a fan of it at all. Uh, okay. Romans mama one. Uh, hi, Minnie. What are your thoughts on the pochette twin GM? I don't see many people with it and I'm curious why, what do you think? Uh, the pochette, the push, the pochette twin GM is a very small, it kind of reminds me of the pochette accessoire in M. It's probably a little bit shorter and it has one singular flap. Uh, and I have mixed feelings on it. I think it's very dainty and I think it's great for a, uh, for an evening clutch. Uh, but I also think it's a little too short. So if it's a little too short, I'm afraid that some of my things won't fit in there. And then a you know, I'll end up trying to put them in, you know, little toy soldier form and then I'll just kind of end up busting out if that makes any sense. Uh, but not, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about it, to be honest. I'm not one way or the other, but I do, I do like how dainty it is. It's very, very small. Uh, so I like that. Okay. Uh, lyrics heaven. I want a Louis Vuitton mirror heart pouch thoughts on the material and should I buy it? Uh, for those of you that don't know, Louis Vuitton a few years back made a collection that was called the mirror collection and it was a silver and a gold tone, a very light gold tone, um, 
kind of material. And uh, they made handbags, they made uh, all they made almas, they made speedies, the coin pouches, there's a few other things that they brought out. But I will be honest, when that came out, I I vividly remember seeing Paris Hilton carrying her alma, this giant alma GM with the mirror. Uh, the mirror, you know, leather texture to it. It looked absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful. Now, I have been thinking about buying a Speedy with that same mirror uh, leather, but there's two things that kind of freak me out about it. Number one, it's that mirror effect or that mirror leather. My goodness, it's so hard to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm afraid that it'll end up getting scratched. And once it's scratched, there is no going back. So unless you're going to use the coin pouch or the heart pouch as a collector's piece, I would definitely say go for it. If you're going to use it every day, just keep in mind that it won't wear like anything else. Uh, I think the metallic look to it will end up chipping off and will get scratched very easily. But as I said before, if you're keeping it as a collector's piece, definitely go for it. I absolutely love it. Every time I see it, I fall in love with it, and I really wish I could find a piece that just looked immaculate so I can add it to my collection. But at the same token, I know they are a little bit uh, more expensive because they are hard to find in such great condition that I'll end up, you know, buying buying one for a lot of money, and it'll just end up sitting on my shelf. But uh, I I like them. I do. <laughs> I think Kim Kardashian had one too way back when, but. Who knows? Uh, okay, Jess Munoz, uh, two questions. Have you heard anything on the price increase for LV? No, I have not, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, and number two, do you use your multicolor cosmetic pouch or are you just going to have it as a collector's piece? Uh, I have used it a few, a few times. I actually um, have used it in my GST, but I get kind of, you know, I, I like it so much, I want it to stay in its perfect condition. So as of right now, I'm considering it a collector's piece. I'm no longer using it, uh, but who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll want to just bust it out one day and start using it again. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's see if I, hopefully I don't mess up this name. Um, Posse kill Sagnant. I'm so sorry. Two questions. What are your, what do you think of the Chanel mini flap in patent leather? I am not a big fan of the mini flap in the patent leather. I think I mentioned it in a few other Minx Mondays. Uh, I don't think Chanel patent leather ages very well, um, unless you're going to be very, very anal as to how you care for it and how you use it. But if you were to use it on an everyday basis or every once in a while and it starts to get those cracks, I don't like the way that it looks. I honestly think that Louis Vuitton's Vernis ages better than the, uh, than the Chanel patent leather. Uh, okay. And two, what is your ethnicity? It's such a mystery. <laughs> yes, it is. I have gotten this question so, so many times, uh, for Minx Monday or <laughs> things like that. I would actually like to keep it a mystery. Um, Way back when, I wasn't going to say what my real name was, but obviously you guys wanted to know, and I love the fact that I was able to share what my, what my real name was. And, uh, I know I kind of, I kind of like the, I kind of like the mystery. <laughs> And I'd like to keep it, but I think it makes me laugh because so many people, uh, not here on YouTube, but you know, in real life, they, uh, I get so many different ethnicities. They ask me if I'm this, that, or the other. Uh, I get a lot of, um, <laughs> it just makes me laugh because I get all of them. I've gotten, um, Mexican, Italian, uh, Cuban, uh, what else? Uh, what else? Indian. Um, what else did I get? Uh, what was it? Oh, what was it? Albanian. Uh, what? So why I will never forget some guy at work, <laughs> some guy at work one time. He told me. <laughs> he told me, "Oh, I know, I know, I know what you are." And I said, "Oh, you do?" And he said, "Yeah, I know your nationality or your ethnicity." I said, "Well, what is it?" <laughs> And uh, he's like, well, you're Persian. And I said, well, I don't, oh, okay, <laughs> whatever you say. He was so sure of it. And I was just, I just started laughing. But I get so many different um, nationalities. And uh, yeah, it's kind of, I, li I like the mystery. <laughs> so we'll keep it like that for now. But 
who knows? Maybe in a few months' time, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> Uh, okay, but great question. Um, Maricel Rivera, just wanted to ask about the Louis Vuitton Petite Noé. Is it a good investment for a bag? What would you prefer, or would you prefer the monogram with the Vaqueta or the Epi leather? Which do you think is more durable? Uh, okay, so this is another great question. I do like the, the Petite Noé. Um, I prefer, I think, the Petite Noé over the, the bigger Noé. It's a very old bag. It's an iconic bag. Uh, it has lots and lots of character that most other Louis Vuitton bags don't have. Uh, so that's why I really, it's very appealing to me in that sense. Uh, and I think if I were to pick out of the two, I would probably go for the uh, the monogram canvas with the Vaqueta versus the, the Epi leather. The Epi leather will be a lot more durable because you don't have to worry about the Vaqueta changing color. You don't have to worry about water spots or anything like that. But... I think for the way that it looks, I prefer the, the monogram, definitely. Uh, yes, it's, it's a very pretty bag. Uh, okay, Nor, Nor Kachaputs, I'm so sorry. Uh, do you wash the dust bags of your bags? Uh, I did once upon a time. I used it for, especially the one that I travel with. If I have my Eva clutch, I tend to carry the dust bags with them or whichever bags that I'm using. And then I tend to clean those, but uh, I have noticed that some of the bags, uh, some of the dust bags, in specific the ones that have the the little drawstring, tend to ball up. And then you know, if, especially if you're going to display them or something like that, it's not very, it doesn't look very good. So I'm kind of, I kind of go back and forth. I want to go back to you know cleaning the dust bags, but at the same time, it doesn't really bother me if if I don't, and they just pretty much stay like that, you know, because I don't like the balling effect that the that. that that happens. It's not very pretty. Uh, okay. Spencer Merrill, what do you think about making the big Louis, v Louis Vuitton pochette into a crossbody on, onto the, cr into the crossbody bag? I was debating upon the Eva, but I thought I could get more into the pochette. Definitely. If you're thinking between the pochette accessoire and M um, and the Eva clutch, you can fit more in my opinion in the pochette accessoire. And, uh, as I said before, I think this is a great, great bag to be able to go cross body. I'm actually thinking about getting rid of my, uh, my Eva clutch and Damia Ben and using this, keeping the strap and using the strap for my pochette accessoire in Damia Ben. Uh, but I think it's a great bag and uh, I say go for it to be able to make it a crossbody bag. Okay, Celia Romero. Hi, Minnie. I have two questions. Number one, if you don't have a space to lay out your LVs in a bookcase, would you recommend putting them back in the box? Uh, no, I would not. Uh, I did a video on um, handbag storage or what I do for my handbag storage. Uh, and you always, uh, you want to be careful, especially because if you have a lot of uh, canvas pieces, if you end up putting them back in the boxes, they end up creasing. And then those creases might turn into cracks over time. Uh, but I always try to stay away from creases whatsoever. I want to make sure that my bags are poofy and full of air paper as much as possible. But if you don't have a bookcase, um, I'd say maybe like a maybe like a table or something where they can kind of just breathe and not be confined to a box. Uh, because as I said before, you do not want those creases. Uh, okay, number two, how do you learn so much about the history of Louis Vuitton? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I'm a big uh, fan of, I'm a history buff. I like to read up on anything that I'm really interested in. So I will go on Wikipedia. I will go, I will find every single book encyclopedia that I can find on something that I'm passionate about. And uh, I read blogs, forums, everything, because I'm so interested in it. And uh I like to be able to pass on any information that I know onto you guys. So it's just because I like to, to read up on, on anything that I like. So I just, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a bookworm. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> uh, okay. Isabella Pecorino. Do your multicolor noir pieces get color transfer on the light colored silk screen LVs when you put them in your Damier Ben bags? Um, Mine have not uh, at this point. However, because it is silk screen, because it is essentially uh, ink, you want to be careful of putting it into a Demi Ben bag because obviously they all have the beautiful red interior, this beautiful red in, you know lining. However, it is extremely um, 
it's extremely saturated. It's a an ex, it's a saturated dye in there, and you don't you want to be careful. Uh, and even my sales associate, when I purchased my uh, well, what was it the uh, the insulate wallet, she said, you know, many just be careful that you don't put it inside of your darker colored bags because there is you you do definitely run the risk <laughs> of uh, getting color transfer on the lighter LVs of the silk screening on the multicolored pieces. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I have not had that happen. I have put it in the Demi Ben bags, and uh, thankfully nothing you know still looks the same. Everything looks the same. However, just keep that in mind. Okay, we're almost to the end, I promise. Uh, Stephanie, why? Uh, two questions. Did you have other brands of purses before luxury purses? If so, how were you able to part with those pieces to invest in excuse me, to invest into your newer, higher end pieces. Uh, yes, I did. I had, um, I had, I had Fossil. I had Lucky. I even had way back when, like Roxy bags when I was, when I was younger. I had Coach, um, Dooney and Burke. Uh, what else? I had Marc Jacobs, Kate Spade, Juicy Couture. My goodness, I had so many Juicy Coutures. And um, really what it came down to was quality. I wanted to have a quality bag and I ended up selling off all of my coaches, especially because I started to see everyone had it. And before you guys say anything, I know that a lot of people have, especially monogram has kind of saturated the public. I get that. However, you still have the quality behind it. And in some of these, uh, designers that I mentioned, you know, previously, I, you know, I saw these bags everywhere and the quality just was not there. So therefore I thought, okay, if I sell everything off and I end up putting more money into a better bag, I'll be able to have um, a better collection. And uh, I, what really, really made it for me was when I started selling off my coaches and we're talking about coaches that I spent five, 600 bucks on and I was getting 120, $150 for them. So the resale value was a lot worse. And, um, you know, once I started purchasing Louis Vuitton and I think I, I sold a few off because I, you know, I, I didn't want them anymore. I saw that the, that the, the value was still in them and I absolutely loved that. So, um, yeah, that's exactly what I did. And, uh, two, how do you prevent yourself from impulse buying other brands in order to purchase luxury brands? One simple answer, wish list. <laughs> A wish list. If you keep a wish, if you have a wish list, a designer wish list with you or on you and you know it and you kind of go to, you know, to buy this thing and while you're thinking about it, you're like, oh wait, if I buy this, that takes away money from getting, you know, whatever it is that I want over here. Uh, so whenever I keep, whenever I think about just impulsively buying something that I don't need, I always think, wait, I can't get this bag or I can get it, but it'll take that much longer because I've been saving, you know, this amount of money. So <laughs> a wish list is a great, great deterrent from buying other brands. <laughs> uh, okay. And I have two left, I believe. Yes. Uh, Real F. Uh, hey, Minnie, I love you to infinity and beyond. Thank you. You never failed to put a smile on my face. I wanted to ask if you ever felt a bit heartbroken when you see people mistreat their fabulous bags. Uh, and she actually gave me an example. She said she was in class and a girl had a Celine uh, tote, a Celine luggage, and uh, the girl was just kind of flay flailing it around in the room. And she had a poorly wrapped sandwich in the bag. And she said that the bag fell off the, off the, off the desk and it fell. And then there was mayo all over the interior of her, of her bag. Uh, <laughs> I was, I literally, my eyes bugged out <laughs> when I, when I read, uh, what, you know, the comment that she put on my, on my channel. And, um, does it make me feel bad how if people mistreat their bags? Not really. Uh, it is, I mean, it's their money. They can do whatever it is they want with it, but there's a tiny little, tiny little part that I feel the bag is looking at me and saying, please take me home. <laughs> Is that silly? Is that stupid? <laughs> I feel like I should go over there and rescue them or slap the person and say, what are you doing? But <laughs> some people don't care about luxury bags. They don't care if it costs $5 or $5,000. They use it for its purpose, a handbag. So no, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> uh, okay. And the very last question, 
Tara Ramos. Uh, hey, Manny, just wanted to let you know you are definitely one of my favorite YouTubers. Thank you. Uh, do you know anyone who kind of looks down on you for having luxury items? I know people who think I'm stuck up and always make rude comments to me because I enjoy luxury items. How do you deal with it? Um, you know, do you? Do you, whatever it is that you, if you like luxury handbags, then go for it. Uh, I've told you guys before, if you're not taking their money, if not, if you're not using their money to buy what you like, they have no business telling you or judging you. People are going to judge no matter what. And if someone is going, if, if someone is not going to take the time to get to know me as a person and they're going to they're going to judge me on my exterior and my materialistic and, and my my material items then they don't deserve knowing whether or not their assumption of me is true or not does that make sense uh, if someone's gonna think I'm you know I don't want to I don't want to uh, I don't want to be rude on here. Uh, <laughs> if someone's going to sit there and say, oh, she's such a beep, 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 because she has these kind of bags, I really don't care. Then you are not worth my time for you thinking, saying nasty things. I'm not going to address it. If anything, I might end up just laughing to myself. Uh, because if someone's going to take the time to get to know you, then definitely... Uh, they can, you know, they can, they can tell you whatever they can tell you things it doesn't necessarily mean they can judge you. Uh, and truth be told a person or I'm sorry, luxury goods, looks, money, do not make a person whatsoever, a personality, a heart, your character traits, those things are the things that make someone. Uh, so no, I guess we like materialistic things, but it does not make who you are. And if someone's going to judge you based on that and think that you are this snob, then so be it. You don't need them in your life. And that's how I deal with them. Just kind of like, oh, whatever, because I know there's the whole community out there who loves the same things I do. <laughs> so, you know, buy your items and rock them with pride. Rock them with pride. <laughs> but anyways, okay, so those are all the questions. Uh, I did answer a few on my channel, so if you did not hear them on here, please go back, and hopefully I was able to answer them. And I also wanted to give you guys a huge, giant, I mean, huge, huge thank you for all of your wonderful comments and your support on my first vlog last week. I was so happy that I was able to surprise you guys because you had no idea it was coming. <laughs> but I'm so happy you liked it and I promise to have more coming. So I'm happy to see where all my subbies are from. You guys are the best. And I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.